All right, this video is how to improve as a music producer and how to get more opportunities. Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Lano Prod from Team Producer Grind. Got the shades, got the Hawaiian shirt because it's hot out here in LA. I'm going to tell you guys how I started working with Team Producer Grind, how that opportunity came organically, and how surrounding myself with a producer community made me better at my craft as a producer. So about a year ago, about a year ago, I think it was around this time. So by the time this video is out, I think on May 12th, in May 11, if you look up the CEO morning show on the Producer Grind 2.0 channel, that was the first time I joined in the Zoom call. They were talking about that Donald Passman book, all the things you need to learn about the music business. I went to USC Thornton School of Music for college and I studied music business there. So one of the first things they had us read was a Donald S. Passman book, all you need to know about the music business. I brought that out and I was just in that Zoom call, just sharing my stuff. And when I was joining those morning shows, I was like, okay, I was unemployed. I, I just left my other internship and I wanted to get more opportunities with my music career. So I was like, okay, Producer Grind is cool. They do a lot of podcasts. They have like a team of people that cook up that do tutorials. And what is this morning show thing? It gave me a reason to not only wake up, but to network with other producers. I wanted to collab with other producers. I knew that if I wanted to get more opportunities, I had to surround myself with people who are better than me and that are chasing the similar goals that I'm chasing. I started networking in the chats, just active, active, just started you know, asking questions, answering questions, following people on IG after the morning show live streams. A couple weeks later, I was telling Dylan from Produce Grind, I was like, yo, on the morning show, we never had an engineer on the podcast before. At my previous job and because of my school, I was able to network with a couple of audio engineers. I think it'll be super valuable to bring them on the show. So I did that not only once, but a couple of times. And through that, Dylan was like, yo, how would you like to be the booking manager for producer grind? I was like, booking manager, what is that? Like, I, all I know is like booking agents, they book shows and all that. I didn't know what it was. The role was super new. During that time, I was also tapping into the team producer grind channels live streams. I was collaborating with TB, T Will, just a bunch of the guys. And I was tapping into the beat battles. I was tapping in the loop flip contest. I was tapping in the beat critiques and people would constantly see my name. I, I became a mod on the Producer Grind 2.0 channel and the Team Producer Grind channel because I was constantly active every morning, every afternoon, every late night stream. I was there submitting my music, saying what's up, and seeing how I could give back. And after doing that consistently, I wasn't trying to get a job with Producer Grind. I was just trying to connect with people that I know can take me further in my career. And because of that, it organically happened that they wanted me to join the team. So I joined the team as a booking manager, you know, would help with the podcast guests. Over time, as I kept collaborating with people um, on the team, I started sending out my loops, sending out my loops, started uploading more beats, started learning from the live streams from other producers that I know are better than me at drums, melodies, composition, mixing, arranging, networking, sending it out for placements, all that. I learned just by surrounding myself with like-minded people that I know are further in their career. After a couple months, I was telling my boss, yo, can I get involved in some packs? I got some dope loops, people will like them. So I started collaborating on the loops, started getting to learn how to do sound design. And now fast forward to January, 2021, I started making videos. I sent Dylan a, a couple examples of videos I made and it was similar to what I brought initially, which was knowledge about the music business, the music industry. So I was doing videos on how to grow your brand, how to grow your Instagram and TikTok followers. I was doing all that, but I wasn't really making tutorials. Not until in February, I dropped my first kit, Cruise West Coast Melodies. <laughs> and yeah, it was fire. I got a couple of my co-producer and musician homies to just make a West Coast pack because, you know, I'm into artists like Blast, Larry June recently. And, you know, I was born and raised to music coming from L.A. and all across the Cali. So we started making that sound and we were like, wow, this isn't this doesn't exist yet on the Producer Ground website. Let's go make this pack. And I think a lot of people will like it. And a lot of people did like it and are using it. And shameless plug, I got a drum kit. By the time you see this video, I got a drum kit dropping this Friday. It's called X Games Drum Kit by Leno Prod. It has very interesting sounds, very versatile. The next video, I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I make out of that drum kit, how you can use those sounds and how it's different from others. So I really brought versatility as a theme to this drum kit. All right, so it's about one year later since I joined Producer Grind, at least the community and almost a year officially working with them. And since January, working with the team and doing content, tutorials, 
sound designing kits. I'm very thankful and proud to say that I accomplished a couple things, including two of my own packs, a couple of collab packs with the team, several tutorial videos from FL Studio to vlog style to me just talking on the camera just like this to share my experience about the music industry, the music business. If you know my TikTok, all you need to know about the music business is part 45. All right, so the title of this video, right, is how to improve as a music producer and get more opportunities. So you guys are probably interested in getting more opportunities first because there's countless tutorials on how to master FL Studio and get better at making beats. So let's first talk about the business side, how to get more opportunities, how to attract more opportunities. Consistency is key. Let me repeat that again. Consistency is key. I didn't get to join Team Producer Grind without waking up every day around 7 a.m. Pacific time, joining the live streams, talking, giving value, exchanging IGs, and collaborating with people on the team. So that's consistency, me constantly showing up, even though I didn't have all the skills, even though I didn't know everything and I still don't know everything, and I still could learn a lot in terms of the skills, I constantly showed up. So that's the number one thing, you gotta consistently show up. And we have a great producer grind, producer community here. You know, we have the Discord, over 7,000 members. We have the YouTube, we have the Twitch, we have the Instagram. There's so many platforms where you could just join, tap in with other producers, watch, learn, observe, ask good questions, and learn how to build your craft and provide value, right? You gotta be consistent. You gotta show up every day. And if you really love this music thing, you'll show up every day. You won't, you won't complain because it's fun. Not only is this fun and you're good at it, but how to monetize it, how to get opportunities, how to make it a career. I'm starting to see this little by little, you know? Now, when you consistently show up, there's two things you gotta do. You gotta work on one, networking, and you gotta, number two, work on personal branding. So let's talk about networking, right? So this is how I stay consistent as a creative. I either learn, watch tutorials, watch podcasts, watch interviews. I either create, I either make beats, work on a mix, do some visual arts. Or if I don't learn or create, I'm networking. And what does that mean? I'm constantly DMing people on Instagram, constantly messaging people on live streams on YouTube and Twitch. I'm sending emails out. I'm sending messages on LinkedIn. I'm asking questions. I'm constantly showing people that, hey, I'm willing to learn that I also have a skill set that I could provide value. If you guys want to learn more why producers are networking wrong, I got a video, 10 producer mistakes when it comes to networking. Go click somewhere here. It'll it'll be in the description. <laughs> I don't know how to do the tags. It'll be in the description. And when you network, it's really a numbers game. As long as you come off as genuine, you have a genuine interest to work with somebody and really learn from them and give them value, whether that's learning how to be better at making beats, whether that's providing them something like graphic design or visual help, whether that's, whether that's providing them mixing and audio engineering, whether that's connecting them with other people that you know can help their platform. You gotta show up and constantly tell people, hey, I wanna learn from you, I like your stuff. This is what I can provide or this is what I wanna get better at. Is there any way we can get in a call? Is there any way we could talk for a bit and give me tips on how I could be better? I call that the student card. When you play the student card and you have a genuine interest how to get better, people love talking about themselves and teaching, AKA a student, how to get better in their career. You guys might be thinking like, Yo, Leno, you don't have no major label placements. Why should I listen to you? Why are you telling us to network when you don't even got major label placements? Hey, I don't have any yet, but it's on the way. And how I can tell you it's on the way is because of exactly what I'm saying. I'm constantly networking, meaning I'm constantly building my beat catalog, um, building my brand, which I'm gonna go to next. And I'm reaching out to certain people that I was able to connect with through the producer grind community and say, hey, if I, he, I see you need this, I see you work with so-and-so. Is there any way I could send you this? Is there any way I could work with you in this aspect? So I have a lot of things in the works that haven't come to fruition yet. But again, when you network and provide people value, you can't expect to get something right away. I think of it like planting seeds, right? You plant a bunch of seeds everywhere and boom, you got a whole forest at the end of the day. <laughs> you got a whole vineyard, then you get the wine. It came to fruition, no pun intended, it became a fruit. <laughs> <laughs> bars guys i'm a rapper check out my spotify i make really good music but that's really what it is when you're networking you're planting seeds you're saying hey um i'm gonna work with this person and do a little bit of this i'm gonna work with this person and do a little bit of this and the reason why you do that is you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket why you can annoy who you're reaching out to and you can come off as desperate and you might even block your own blessings so if you send me loops if you send me beats if i do that to somebody for placements and I want to collab, I'm not gonna like message them every day, every hour, say, hey, 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 have you have you checked it out? Have you checked it out? That's a mistake that I've definitely made and that kind of blocked my opportunity from even happening. But the more I was just consistent and just, yo, 
here's this, here's this, here's this, no question asked. I'm consistent, I'm genuine. I'm showing them that I have a genuine interest in working with them and seeing how I could give them value. And doing that multiple number of times, I think it's only a matter of time. I think my year is 2021. I, I think the placements are coming, guys. I don't know. The whole team's winning. And when the team wins, I win too. So I'm glad to be part of this producer grind community. Here's another gem I learned. I'm also networking across horizontally, not just vertically. It's cool to hit up the people that are at the top and you want to, you know, get that Drake placement. That, hey, that'd be amazing. That'd be life changing. But don't be limited to just looking at people that are at the top. Look at people that are on the sides, aka your peers, aka people in the community. You never know who's gonna be the next Metro Boomin, the next Wheezy, the next so and so. Like these guys around you that you're kind of blind to might be the next so and so. And I'm not saying that to just work with them to use them for gains. Like, no, if you generally like what they do, learn a lot from them, and feel like you can help them out in any way or work with them then by all means you gotta build with people around you i'm doing this as an artist with my friends from college and my homies back home that make music that are serious we're constantly putting out music i do this with producers all across the world producer grind has opened up my network to literally across the world i've been going live on the beat critiques there's people in europe asia africa south america north america antarctica i'm just kidding no penguins here but yeah constantly working with people around you that's actually from what i heard from a couple people that i look up to they say that's better because then you come up with them what if we are the next fill in the blank of whoever the top producers are right now what if we're the next them so you got to build with people around you because you never know how far we're gonna go the music industry is still small it's still tight-knit you got to really build with people that you generally want to work with that are around you don't just aim for the top aim around you network horizontally so even though i don't got major label placements right now i'm building with my team of people around me so i know okay if i do get a major label placement that's amazing that looks really good you know social proof it helps with branding but also i'm building something here and that way you don't rely too much on like placements and all that to save your career because really the music industry is not just black and white there's a lot of nuances there's a lot of different ways to make income there's a lot of different ways to build your audience and get quote-unquote success whatever that means to you so there's many ways to do it just don't sleep on the people that are around you so people that are watching this video and commenting and in the live streams you guys should be networking with each other i stress that all the time when i go live on my b critiques like hey guys collab with each other okay like message each other on ig send loops blah 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 see how you can learn how to get better at drums from one person to the other now i want to talk about personal branding and why that's important now this is something that i'm constantly learning and upgrading each day i'm constantly working on my instagram my youtube you know those are the main two platforms i use to put myself out there but i have a video you know how to work on your personal brand on instagram that i think that was the first video i did with team producer grind so that's super dope watch that i say the importance of showing your face not a shot to people that use logos if you can use a logo that's dope but if you do um show your if you do show your face as a producer it can help stick in people's memory of how ugly you look uh, <laughs> it'll stay in people's heads but anyways personal branding right so check out my video on how to um, build your instagram as a producer and mind you i'm constantly updating it. it it doesn't mean that video is not the end all be all i'm constantly learning different strategies so don't just listen to this video don't just watch my video watch a ton of videos from people that you look up to and you're like damn how did they grow that following oh maybe because their content is actually good if you check my instagram right now i'm very intentional with the content i put out whether it's a music video whether it's a tutorial whether it's a film photo of me i have a certain way of putting out the photo or video the ig reels i have a certain way of doing captions hashtags this all comes through time i'm getting a lot of traffic too from youtube i'm almost at 2.5k followers on instagram hopefully i hit 5k by the end of this year who knows but i know this the more i went live doing beat critiques with team producer grind i grew so much more followers because after the live people would hit me up and i'll like be like yo your beats were dope let's work blah 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 i would repost people on the highlights be like yo these were dope beats so i'm giving back and showing people like yo let's build our social profiles if we both make good music we got to grow a personal brand because a lot of times your brand is your first impression. Your Instagram is pretty much your resume, right? It's a visual portfolio that people look you up on Google or on Instagram and they're like, okay, this is what this person is about. So less pictures of your pizza and random video games and cats and more pictures of you working in the studio or, you know, getting stuff done. Another thing I want to add about personal brand is going back to the theme of consistency. 
if you're constantly switching like I am with these glasses, I always have, I have these, I have the big glasses that TB always hates on, I look like a robot, I have the 90s R&B shades, I have the big aviator glasses, makes me look like Einstein nerd. I have a bunch of glasses, but hey, at the end of the day, that's my style. I'm playing with that. I'm an artist too. And producers, you got to treat yourself as an artist, even if you don't record your own lyrics and vocals. Producers are artists nowadays. We have people like Metro Boomin, Pyrex Swippa, who also does music. Like We have all these producers that are building their brands, and we're seeing the importance of that. You can't hide behind the screen too much, you know? You can't hide behind the logo too much. Really show your face, show you have a personality, connect with people live, um, reach out, talk, respond to DMs, respond to comments. This is all part of building your personal brand and it's attracting people like, oh, when they hear Leno, if they see a logo, they're gonna see the red, yellow, blue logo a lot. If they see my face, they're gonna know like, okay, it's that Asian or Filipino dude on Producer Grind and he does like West Coast stuff. That's kind of how I branded myself. If you guys haven't noticed on Team Producer Grind, I did several West Coast tutorials, you know, from Blast to Larry June, Kalen For Real For Real, DJ Mustard. The reason why I did that is because we didn't have a lot of that on the Team Producer Grind channel. This is another thing about personal branding. You can really stand out not only by being yourself consistently, but also finding your niche. I'm at a certain niche, you know, there's a certain kind of people that are attracted to my content and my stuff and my sound. And that's what that's how you could really excel. If you're out here trying to do what everyone's doing, it's going to be hard to know who you are unless you got cloud and work with so and so. But if you're just starting and building your brand, don't be ashamed if you make weird lo-fi beats, really own into what makes you stand out, put that out consistently. And this is not to box you in in your personal brand. We look at somebody like I look up to Kanye West and Travis Scott, right? Like those guys are constantly evolving after every album, but you still know it's Kanye West. You still know it's Travis Scott. That's how strong their brand is. Whether it's the things they talk about, whether it's how they dress, whether it's the visuals they put out, whether it's the type of music and sounds they use. So with personal branding, it's visual, it's sonically, it's your personality it's all of those right it's really how you present yourself consistently over time because what is branding it's not what we think we are branding is what people think we are so if we're consistent on what we put out there people are going to brand us a certain way and then you can consistently grow and evolve your brand once you build that trust and consistency i'd be talking so much my mouth running dry but anyways the last thing i want to talk about you know we talked about consistency we talked about networking we talked about branding all of this can work and you can really climb the steps and the ladder in the music industry if your beats are mid and your 808s are out of key which are annoying stop sending those out of eight out of stop sending those out of key 808s to those beat critiques <laughs> our team's gonna pull out our hairs and just flip our laptops and just we're done but stop sending them out of key 808s so you can have all that and still get placements and you could still like We've seen it. We, there's a couple of hits out there. I'm not going to say what. They have out of key 808. So you could not be good at or, or a master of your craft. I wouldn't wait until you're a master of your craft to start networking and building your brand. But if you could do both, I, I, we can't treat this as you're limited to one or the other. I'm doing both. So I'm networking. I'm building my brand. But when I caught myself constantly networking, this was earlier last year, I was doing too much of reaching out and building the business side that I wasn't focused on the music. And once I gained back on that rhythm of constantly making beats every day or constantly working on loops every day, the more I worked on my craft of the bread and butter of all this, which is music, right? The more I worked on that, the better my brand was overall because now when you network and someone wants you to pull up at the studio or they want to collab with you, you talk the talk. You're not all talk. And when you show up, you're able to prove your point. What do they say? There's no such thing as luck. It's opportunity meets preparation, right? If you're not prepared and you get the opportunity, then you flop. But that's okay. We all fail. Abundance mindset. Keep it going. Again, it's a numbers game. You constantly improve. Your biggest asset is time. So take time to learn. Like I said, if you're not creating, you're not networking, learn. Watch tutorials. Watch podcasts. Now, don't get too caught up and overthink and be overwhelmed with all the knowledge. Really take time to be like, you know, I want to have fun. At the end of the day, making music should be fun. Your love for music and the fun that you experience when I make a beat, that's what keeps me going, really. And I'm not tripping about the business side if it fails or or if I don't get a certain collab replacement because at the end of the day, I would be making music if I weren't getting paid because it's fun. But the fact that I am getting paid now, I gotta double down and learn how to make this a living so I could do this fun thing over a long period of time. Okay, so how do you get better besides watching tutorials, right? I watch a lot of tutorials, but like I said, if you watch too many tutorials, your brain gets fried and you're like, man, sometimes you'll be making a beat and you'll interrupt your 
flow state, right? As Curtis King talked about in one of his videos, shout out to Curtis King. It disrupts your flow state because now you're like in the middle of watching a tutorial, then you're like, dang, the, the muse, the magic is gone when you were making that melody or making that beat because you're, now you're distracted about logical stuff on how to get the technical stuff down. So set aside time to watch tutorials and then set aside time to create, right? But besides watching tutorials, this is how you could get better. This is how I got better. So when I joined Producer Grind, the community last year around May, June, July, around summer, right? Around this time, about a year ago, my drums were my weakness, right? My melody was dope. I had dope sample chops. I had really cool, versatile melodies. And that was what made me stand out. That's why people liked my loops. And that was really cool. But whenever I would add drums, it would be mid, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I definitely had some out of key 808s. I had some paper towel kicks. I had some floppy snares. I had some weird effects on the hi-hats that weren't pleasant and people were like, what are you doing? So I was doing that on the mix too. Cause you know, I come from college. I, I learned a lot about audio engineering. I interned at a music plugin company. I learned a lot about how to mix. I had to unlearn a lot of that for the style of music I was making. I was doing too much. So surrounding myself with the producer community, with Producer Grind, I was able to see how the producers that are succeeding, they have a really strong sense of how to make good drums that hit, um, how to make good melodies, how to arrange. So when I constantly surrounded myself, watch the live streams, just watch and observe, you know, and then ask questions. How did you get that sound, bro? How'd you, how'd you mix it? What kit did you use? You learn how to mix better. You learn how to do better sound selection. You learn how to do better bounds, do better patterns. So the more I not only watch tutorials, but the more I learn from actual producers and ask them personally how they did that, watch them cook up and try to get a similar sound to them using a similar kits, similar techniques, similar patterns that I would draw in FL Studio. Over time, my ears were being trained and it was like, okay. And the more you practice, right, every day, it's like a muscle. You keep training it. It's like muscle memory, it's secondhand nature. You could do it in 10, 15 minutes now. It used to take me one or two hours on average to make a beat. Now I could do it in less than 30 minutes because it's just practice over time. I have good kits, good sound selection. I mix very simple, mostly levels, right? I don't overcomplicate and overdo the mix if there's no vocals yet. And then third, I learn how to do certain bounds, certain rhythms, and train your ear on how to feel music in a certain way that can have a certain artist or certain rapper to hop on the beat easily without being distracted or turned off. So learning the, learning the craft like that, just by surrounding yourself with people that are better than you, that's why you gotta be involved in the live streams, you gotta be involved in producer community, you gotta do DMs, you gotta collab, collab, collab. Now that I've been working on my drums a lot, a lot of people have been sending me loops. You know who you are. And yo, shout outs to like a couple guys like Unwanted Chip from the UK and Millsy from New York. Like those two guys would be constantly sending me loops because I know their melodies are fire. And now I could cook up beats to send out for placements way faster because I don't got to make the melody. I was so used to and burnt out of making melodies. I wanted to get better at drums. Boom, bunch of producers collabs send me loops. They have sounds that I never thought of doing before. I get to be better at my drums. It's a win-win. And boom, we got all these beats out. And hey, hopefully this year, hopefully this year we get them placements. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's how you can get better at your craft. You got to collab. Don't be so egotistical like, oh, I did everything. I used to be like that because, you know, I didn't have a lot of stuff growing up. So I was like, oh, I did everything. But hey, that's why I sucked because I thought I could do everything. Nah, like learn from people, collab, see if someone's better than you and they're down to help you on something, bro, get them on. A lot of the hits we like now are made by multiple producers. It's very rare that we have one producer on a really big song. So the power of collabs, do not sleep on that. That's really how you could get more doors open, more opportunities, more chance to work with people you never thought of working with. Just because I said this music industry is small and you don't know where people around you might be in the next one, two, three, five, ten years, right? So constantly work with everybody that you that you're down to work with and then yeah just you can get better in the craft if you don't go through this journey alone so that's mainly what i want to talk about that's how you could improve as a music producer that's how you could get more opportunities i told you guys my year with producer grind and how much i've grown on the craft and also on the business and you know with doing more tutorials content kits um I'm not really selling beats right now because I'm focused more on, you know, the producer grind tutorials and content. But hey, over time, I'm trying to just build my catalog to send out for placements. But hey, shout out to people that are constantly putting beats in their beat store. I give you guys props. Again, the name of the game is consistency, whether that's tutorials, kits, beats, uh, projects on Spotify, uh, sync placement. Um, I don't know what else you'd be doing. TikToks, like <laughs> whatever you do, IG reels, like as long as you're consistent, you're going to grow and be in a different place.
as long as you're consistent have fun so again this is lano from team producer grind i want to shamelessly plug i got by the time this video is out i'm gonna drop my drum kit called x games drum kit it's um over 100 sounds we got kicks 808s snares claps rims hi-hat midis weird perks that i recorded from scratch from my iphone no joke weird effect sounds ambience transitions um i got synth bass shots a little west coast stuff i got some synth shots auto-tune vocals that's a big deal on this kit you know where shout out to splice and arcade but hey if you want my out of key and no, i'm kidding it's auto-tuned vocals of, of me and, and it's dry and it's also wet so you have the effects and you have it without effects so you can really tweak it chop it up and it's all 100 percent royalty free make sure you cop that use my code lano 21 l-a-y-n-o 21 for 10 percent off and yeah constantly support us subscribe like comment below what did you learn in this in this whole um time that we've been more connected online what did you learn are you collabing with people are you working on your craft are you building the business and are you investing in crypto shout out to telcoin we go into the moon and yeah hit me up on instagram if anything leno prod l-a-y-n-o-p-r-o-d constantly follow me i got my drum kit i got more tutorials i got more music on the way as an artist i'm dropping singles every month so i appreciate you guys so much look out for the next tutorial i'll be showing you how the x games drum kit can be used to show versatility in your music production i will be making a beat using that kit and other gems will be in that video so stay tuned thank you guys for watching and yeah peace out